do it well. And then go out to dinner. Antonio? The Marshall student athletes will be first. Just a reminder to silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you and limit one follow up. And we'll get going in about a minute.
All right, we will start with the Marshall student athletes today. Representing Marshall is Jared West and John Elmore. Raise your hand for questions for the student athletes. <coughs> This, by the way, could be the youngest reporter that we've had in the history of the NCAA. So go ahead. Start. Okay, uh, Max Bonstetter, Sports Illustrated. Uh, how are you going to slay the West Virginia Giants tomorrow? Because they're a huge team. We're looking for forward to the challenge. Uh, like you said, they are a good team. They're physical. Uh, they've got a decent press. Um, but we're looking forward to the challenge. I think we've got a pretty good team, and I think we match up pretty well. So we're going in confident, and we think we can win. Rick McCann, Huntington Herald Dispatch, West Virginia. Uh, John, uh, how do you think this? No, not necessarily, not necessarily this team, but the things that you all have accomplished. How does it stack up against some of the other Marshall teams back through history? I think we're kind of set in history at Marshall. Marshall team has never won an NCAA tournament game. Haven't been in 31 years. Uh, but the thing we keep telling each other is we're not satisfied. Yeah, we've done a lot of stuff that hasn't been done in a long time, but we want to keep winning. Our goal at the beginning of the year was to win the national championship. And yeah, that's hard, and only one team does it. But that's what we strive for. That's what we're expecting out of this run. And uh, we're going to take it one game at a time and see what happens. Tim Booth from the AP. Guys, for, for both of you, you're both West Virginia kids. You play for a West Virginia university. What is that? mean to you, especially in the context of a game like this, playing against a state school? Um, we're really excited for the opportunity, obviously playing against West Virginia on the national stage in the round of 32 of the NCAA tournament. Uh, it can't be more exciting, can't be uh, more hyped up than that. But uh, we're really excited. WV is a good team. Um, I think us being from West Virginia, that just allows us to play with even more chip on our shoulder, play with that extra edge and competitive nature. But uh, we're going we're gonna to come out ready to play and be excited to play. To your right, um, Bryce Miller from the San Diego Union Tribune. I guess for both of you guys, as players, you have no control over the history in this series, but just the fact that you are playing each other after that long regular season uh, series ended, w what do you think about you know all the discussion about the coaches barking back and forth, and an op and maybe more than that, what you do control is the opportunity to finally you know go head to head with West Virginia on the court. We don't worry anything about that. Uh, yeah, it'd be cool to have the game, but. People understand why they don't, but uh, I just think it's ex it's an exciting time for the state. Uh, I mean, you talk to everybody back home; half the state's population is probably flying out here right now for the game. Uh, the uh, attention West Virginia is getting—I mean, shoot, half the media doesn't even know we're a state. So uh, it's definitely cool that we're the two teams out of West Virginia, both in the round of 32, playing uh, with a shot to go to the Sweet 16. So we wish them the best, but we're going to give it our best to hopefully keep dancing and keep this uh, keep this dream alive. Uh, we're, we're really excited, like you said. We, we try to stay out of the, the politics and all that stuff. That's not our responsibility. Our responsibility is just come out and be ready to play. And, uh, you know, we're excited. Like you said, State of West Virginia is really excited. This is a, op a great opportunity for the state. But uh, we don't worry about the, the, the rivalry not, not being played the last few years. We're just excited to be able to play them now. In the back. Mitch Vengel, Charleston Gazette Mail. And Jared, I was wondering if. You've talked to your dad, and <laughs> how conflicted is he in this one? Um, you know, he's excited. I, I wouldn't say he's very conflicted at all, really. I think he's definitely rooting for us really hard. But, uh, yeah, he, he was excited. I called him yesterday after the game. And he was – they were watching the game in the Charleston Embassy, and, you know, he was really excited, really packed. And uh, to find out that we played West Virginia, that, that just made it even that much better. So he, he's really excited, but there's not a lot of conflict there. Is he coming out? Uh, I think so. I'm pretty sure he's coming out. Other questions for the student athletes? Get here first, and then we'll go to you. Doug Smock, Charleston Gazette Mail. Uh, John, was it your first or second game you played against the Mountaineers it in your martial career? My second game. I had a torn up ankle, and I think we were up six or eight points at half, and it was a really good game. Uh, they kind of grinded us down the second half and wore us out a little bit. But um, we're a new team. We've got a lot of new guys, and uh, hopefully it'll be a little different. Uh, Max again, Sports Illustrated, but uh, I wanted to know, you guys, it seems like you really like genuinely like each other and you have fun with each other on and off the court. 
Uh, how has Coach Dan Tony created that like, that feeling and that relationship? I'd say it's just the environment. Uh, every day we come into practice, and uh, you genuinely like some of these guys are your best friends. Uh, you see each other every day, so uh, you obviously enjoy their presence or you hate them, and most of us enjoy each other's presence. Uh, but I think the way we play has a lot to do with that. I think we have the most fun system in the country. Uh, we get up and down, score a lot of points, shoot a lot of threes. And the good thing about this team is nobody cares about anybody else's success. Everybody's rooting for each other no matter what's going on. So uh, knowing your teammates have your back like that creates a pretty awesome atmosphere. And uh, I wouldn't trade this team for the world. Kyle Boninger, ESPN.com. Jared, did you grow up a West Virginia fan? You know, I went to games and stuff like that. I, I mean, I, I supported them. I rooted for them. I wouldn't say I was like a diehard fan. I mean, I wasn't like a hater, like going to root against them or anything like that. I mean, I watched them. I went to games, even football games, stuff like that. I know a lot of people that, that went there or go there now still. So, I mean, my dad obviously going there and stuff, being around it all the time. So, yeah, I mean, I liked it. I, I, I supported them. I wouldn't say I was like a diehard fan, though. And, and did they recruit you at all? Uh, a little bit, maybe not as much as I think I should have been, but I, I, not a whole lot, a little bit, but not too much. Any other questions for the student athletes? This is for both uh, Jared and John, Tony Carini with the Mountaineer Sports Network. If, if you guys could compare a style of play that West Virginia will use in comparison to who you guys have seen this season. When you guys have started to watch tape, did anyone pop out to you as a similar style? I'd say Old Dominion. Uh, Old Dominion's a tough physical team. They've got interior bigs with some size, strength. Uh, I don't think anyone we've played so far has pressed at all. I mean, some teams have thrown a little bit at us, but I think we've handled it pretty well. But nobody's pressed to the extent West Virginia does. Uh, they have a heck of a press. They do a great job. Their guards get in you. Uh, they trap once they try to get you sped up. So I don't think we've played a whole lot like West Virginia, but we've had some similarities. But I think we've done a good job scouting these past this past day and a half, and uh, hopefully we'll be ready. Um, yeah, I think I would say Old Dominion. Uh, UAB a little bit. They have some bigs. Western Kentucky has some bigs um, from an offense standpoint as far as pounding us in the paint, going to the offensive, re offensive glass. Even Wichita State a little bit, going to the offensive glass. But from a defense standpoint, I would, I would say we haven't faced nearly as much just consistent pressure throughout the whole game. Uh, there have been some teams that pressed us to some degree throughout the game, maybe every dead bar or so like that. But West, obviously, West Virginia is relentless. Press every, every play down, make or miss, they're going to be honest. So I'll, I would say not, not as uh, defensive like. Uh, Doug Smock, Charleston Gazette Mail again. Uh, well, along those lines, how big is it that you have basically three ball handlers and you can even throw Dean in there as, as a fourth? How big is that in handling a press? I think it's huge for us, like you said, in the fact that we're confident with mostly all of our guys handling the ball, maybe one or two here or there that we don't want just trying to break the press. But I'd say we've got four guys on the court probably at all times that are capable of handling one-on-one -on -one pressure. If you run a double, they're smart enough to make the key pass out of it. So I, uh, I like our chances against the press just in the fact that all our guys have been trained and have been recruited here because they are so versatile and can do multiple things like dribble and pass. So uh, I, think we'll be, I think we'll be just fine. Any other questions for the student athletes? OK, gentlemen, thank you. Good luck tomorrow.
Showtime. Thank you. All right, a reminder to silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Raise your hand, we'll get you the microphone. And up next for Marshall is head coach Dan D'Antoni. Outside of that, we'll uh, have an opening statement to begin <laughs> from Coach Dan Tony. What do you want me to talk about? Whatever you'd like. Uh, you, you don't want you to regret that statement. <laughs> uh, looking forward to the game. Big old game. Everybody's happy right now. And that's the life of a coach, you know, to get to enjoy it and enjoy being here and uh, enjoying this opportunity. And when you enjoy something, you want to keep it going. So we're going to give us our best shot, see if uh, we can't keep this little trip we're on to the next road destination. All right, now questions for Coach D'Antoni. Brent Scrotenborg, USA Today. Could you tell us from your perspective why this series stopped after the 2015 game? No, you don't have to ask West Virginia about that. Okay. You I'm not going to go just play at Morgantown. So <laughs> after that, ask West Virginia. I don't know. I think it should be played. In other words. Okay. But fairly, you know, one time their place, one time our place, one time a neutral place, you know, whatever. Coach, uh, Bryce Miller from the San Diego Union Tribune, kind of on that point, from your perspective, is there any uh, wiggle room on the terms of a potential series? Would you do a two for one or a three for one? Or is in your mind, is no, it only we're, one we're for one? we division one school. You know, you've got to treat us like one. I love to play. I always. I'll needle them a little bit. I see somebody I can needle, so I'm going to needle them a little bit. And uh, you know, we play in West Virginia University. I coach Marshall University, where West Virginians play. So we'll just leave it at that. Chuck Landon, Herald Dispatch. You know, along those lines, how happy are you that you're getting an opportunity to play them again now? I might not be so happy after the game. <laughs> Yeah, well, right, good. right now. Yes, it's not a slight on them. They're good. As and, we sit here, how happy are you? <laughs> hey, they're good, and they got a great coach. It's all a fame coach. It's not about that. It's not about myself or him, Coach Huggins. Terrific coach. And a great university. It's a recognition of the two university, major universities in West Virginia. That's all. Nothing more to me. I lived it when we became college to – University and wanted to play in my years. One Mike wanted to play his years, couldn't get it done. So, you know, I, ju I just feel like it's time, you know, should be done one time. That's my opinion. They, they have a different opinion. So, life goes on. Coach, to your left. Uh, Max Bonstead or Sports Illustrated? Hey, Max. Hey, um, I, yep. sat there. I think he's a smart old guy. He sat, I sat beside him in the ball game. He's telling me all about it. Go ahead. Uh, so yesterday we talked about how a lot of your players have been recruited from the state of West Virginia, and they're often players that some other colleges were ignoring or weren't even recruiting, and they're probably wishing that they recruited them now. Um, but you, you've turned this group into a tough team that plays your NBA up-tempo, you know, the three-point style oriented uh, style of play. How have you done that, and do you think the style of play will help you against the tough West Virginia press tomorrow? Well, it better help us. <laughs> Let's put it that way, or they'll, they'll arouse us. So, uh, you know, I've been blessed. I, I, I was born into a house that had a great coach, so I started learning at an early age. I had a brother, became a great coach. I learned from him. I got a classroom with NBA coaches and NBA players that I learned from them. And then you just kind of mix that into your own style, you know, who you are can't go away from yourself and anything, whether it be a reporter. I, I don't feel like you know, people can see through uh, people that aren't themselves. And uh, uh, somebody asked me the question, well, do you, you coach junior high, high school, pro, college? How, how did you manage to do that? And I told them all the same. You know, I'm trying to help them. That's it. And you just give them what you are and be true, be truthful. Don't try to fool anybody. 
I'm not very good at fooling people. So, you know, I just let it ride, say it, and walk out. You know, that's all I can do. Dan Mitchell from Charleston Gazette Mail. I was you. I saw you. Out I'm, I'm here. <laughs> this, I was just wondering the matchups. You, I saw you watching the game, West Virginia game the right. other day. Wondering how you think the teams will match up, and maybe what, where will be a key area to, to watch. Well, the game's going to be won. How we defend the paint. You know, they they stay tight. They got good little offenses. The coach has done a great job with what they have, what they do. You know, I, I don't know when you saw me watching. I had my eyes closed after I saw how big they were. So I don't know when you when you thought I was watching. But uh, we're going to have to try to do the best we can in that area and then use our strengths to be better at what we do as opposed to what they do. And that we're not going to stop everything. It's impossible. You know, 280 pounds, or, you know, we don't have anything like that. I told somebody, look like, remember the old commercial where you – you had the guy that had been in the weight room on the beach. He was kicking sand on the guy that hadn't been. Where that guy getting kicked on the sand? So, I, I, you know, I don't know. We're we just going to play as hard as we can. Uh, got a couple things that I'm not going to tell you because you're going to tell Huggy. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll try to do a few things. I, whether it work, I don't know. But it'll come down to whether, too, we can get the ball moving. We're not quite as athletic and big, obviously. But that they're not as fast as that ball. So if we can get the ball moving, it'll give our angles and our three-point shooters a chance to get them off. And then now, you know, you get two, we get three. You get two, we get three. You get two, we get three. We win. So we'll, we'll see what happens, you know. I don't know. You know, that's basically what we're going to do. If we're going – you know, I had that Pittsburgh reporter one time. He said, how come you didn't go down the low post? I said, you know, the guy we were going to in the low post was ranked 50th in the country. The guy I was going to try to beat him with was ranked 550. Now, that would be a real smart coach to go and try to do that, right? So, you know, we're going to use our strength. You know, whatever we can do, our, ours is ball movement. John's creative. we got to get the ball moving, get Carter off of him a little bit. He's like glue. He's a good player. They, they're a good team. They're one of the best. And the good thing about Marshall basketball now is we're here to play them. That hasn't been. So now we're here to play them. And, and believe me, this experience, win or lose, is going to make us better. We're going to go back home, and we're going to be a national basketball program. And that's why uh, I came back. And I got a few more years, and I'm going to try to get this done. Coach, just to understand maybe a little bit of your relationship with Coach Huggins. Name and affiliation. If you oh, oh, sorry, Bryce Miller again from the San Diego Union Tribune. Um, when was the last time you guys talked, and whenever that was, what was the topic with Coach Huggins? Well, I like Coach Huggins. It's not about Coach Huggins. Y'all y'all make it about him. It's not about him. Heck, I respect him. I've watched his teams play, and I've watched him over the years. He's a great, great coach. And the West Virginia is a good university. It's not, it's not that. It's the relationship they have with Marshall that I'm trying to improve. And Huggins and I sat down. We talked for 30 minutes this summer at, uh, recruiting. And uh, I think it was Myrtle Beach. Or, I believe it was Myrtle Beach. Or someplace. I went so many I can't remember. But uh, I respect him thoroughly. You know, I, it's not – I think he said the other day, it's not about – he has a different opinion or somebody has a different opinion of how the relationship Marshall should be in sports. And with just a difference of opinion. It's not – I don't hate anybody. I, my brother got his master's from there, a doctorate or a lawyer degree from there. You know, we, we, we're familiar with West Virginia people. Now, do I want to beat him? Does he give me a special little – yeah. But that's good. That's nothing wrong with that. That's what makes it fun. It wouldn't be fun if I didn't get excited. Doug Smock, uh, Charleston, West, Charleston, West Virginia Gazette Mail. I know you, Doug. Yeah, I know you do. Uh, your emphasis on having players who can handle the ball, you've got three or four of them on the court at all time. How big is that going to be against the Mountaineers press and their defense in general? Well, you know, our, our philosophy, Mike and I are philosophy, and, or, and there's a lot of people. I, I shouldn't even say it's us. But you got to have the day in basketball. you got to have five people who can score the basketball from any position on the floor. And when you do that, you're hard cover because now the floor expands and the defense expands and you don't have anybody that you can slide off of. You can't 
game plan off of people. If you watch the game uh, against uh, Wichita State, we didn't guard for uh, zero, nothing. We didn't even guard. Stood over there just trying to mess up all the other guys. Uh, uh, Shaq, you know, uh, we'd come down. He's at the foul line. We've got two guys on Shaq, not guarding zero. So I, in my mind, is if you got somebody we can game plan off of, then we got a we got a link that we can get to. So I want my team to be. They can play every position, five, four, one, two. They can end up in every position, and they can all score from that position. And if you can do that, then it's hard for teams to game plan that. That's why we score. And then we also believe that it's the first good shot, not the shot the coach manufactures, but that the players manufacture a first good shot. A lot of people will look, a lot of sports writers, oh, man, they took an early shot. They're settling. You know, the problem, especially with our team maybe, because we're not as physical and maybe as athletic, we don't take the first opportunity. We might not get another one. So I don't want them to take my shots. I want them to take ones that they can get. I trust them. Is there times when I have to go, yeah, yeah, they, they, we took some bad shots. But so does teams that do exactly what the coach says and have to take a tough shot at the end of that too. So, you know, we, we, we play our strengths. We spread the floor, move the basketball, joy playing. Trust your trust them. I don't pigeonhole players. We don't. I don't have a guy. We don't shoot layups. Normal, normal layups. We don't do that. If I have to teach them that at this level, we're in trouble. So we don't have layup lines. We don't. We're teaching fades and over here. One thing I learned from Steve Nash, who's not a great athlete, is that you can perform as a great athlete. And if you keep it simple and you take the kinks out of their game, you can have them play like a perfect athlete. And uh, Steve could go by anybody. And he wasn't exceptionally fast, but he was no, there were no flaws in what he did. So that's how we teach, do the best we can, and have fun doing it. We're going to go from the back to right here and then up front. Aaron Torres with The Athletic. Uh, Coach, you just mentioned now becoming kind of a national program, a national brand. So much of what you guys have done up to this point is through local guys, West Virginia guys, guys that have pride playing at Marshall. I'm just curious if you've taken the time to consider when you get back, maybe your phone will be ringing with some guys that might not have been interested before and how you kind of find that balance of still finding guys that are right for you, your program, as the program continues to ascend higher and higher. Well, I, I encourage all West Virginia coach, coach them up because I want the best West Virginia kids to be the best that I can find, period. And uh, they're there. I was not recruited. You know, I, I have one scholarship. That was to Marshall. And I thought I was good enough to play somewhere else. But, uh, and I ended up decent where, you know, I could have probably played a lot. A lot of places would have recruited me. But uh, I'm going to recruit West Virginia. The one I, I, think, I think that's the way college basketball ought to be. I think that's what it is. You know, it, you're representing your state. And if you're not looking at your state first, I think that's a mistake. So I think I can find kids that I can coach up if they're willing to be coached and we look for coachable kids. Uh, I think I can get them to a level that they can compete against anybody. And then after that, we'll, we'll look elsewhere. I, I always tease West Virginians. I said, we've got to have more tall people in this state because it's hard to find tall guys. So I went overseas. Uh, we had connections over there and got Penova, Millen, and have a couple more in mind. But uh, so we got tall people. I got short people in West Virginia like me. And uh, if there's a good, we, we, we recruited a kid out of Zanesville, Ohio this year. Uh, but most of my kids, you know, they're, they're going to be, they'll be a full stock of West Virginians. I'm going to find them. They're there. I'm going to give them an opportunity that I was given to see and, and make it on national stage. So I guess if you're out of state and smaller, you better be real good. You know, and then we'll make you, uh, we'll, we'll fill out the adoption papers <laughs> and I'll bring you in. You'll be a, a adopted West Virginia, which we have some of those. So that's good. Uh, Rick um, McCann, Huntington. Uh, Mark, oh, we're going to go first with oh. Mark Ziegler. Uh, Mark Ziegler from San Diego Union Tribune. Um, obviously, you're you're sold and your staff and your players are sold on, on an analytics-based system. Um, 
why are more schools not doing that? Why are some of the bigger schools not doing it? It makes a lot of sense to you. It made a lot of sense the other night. Um, and do you think maybe your victory and, and a team like Buffalo that plays pretty fast, some of the similar tendencies. You can look at Baltimore, too. Baltimore against the, the slowest team in the country. Do you think that will change some minds, or, or, or why do you think we don't see more of this? You know, that's a, that's a tough question. First of all, I want you to know you can win a lot of different ways, okay? I, uh, it's really how well you play what you do. Now, do I think by spreading the floor you get a little advantage? Yes. And, and I, I think he is advantage to a maybe not quite as physical, not as athletic player, if he has the skills to play an open floor game. And uh, uh, I, I thought at Marshall, you know, when I came in, we're not going to get that complete player that's skilled, athletic, and big. So now, if I'm not getting that kind of player, well, how can I compete against that type of team? And that's by using a system that allows the skill part of it, which I think we can get, and then being able to teach it. And, and if I got anything going for me, it's that I, I learned all those steps that I've had coaching junior high, high school, college, pro, that I got a lot of knowledge that was given to me. I don't, I don't want you to think I popped in this genius mind. It's not. I just was open to learning. And it's hard sometimes for people to be open to new things, especially when you've been successful for old, with old things and when things change. I put up a, a thing in New York, which we had difficulty changing past thoughts on how to win to maybe a new way. And I put up, it went over sometimes, sometimes it did go over too good, but I put up, you know, McDonald's is the number one hamburger chain in America. And in order to stay the number one grossing revenue hamburger chain, they start selling breakfast. So sometimes you just got to change. And that's difficult for some people. It's not difficult for me because I forgot what I did yesterday and I'm always trying to figure out what to do the next day. So. You know what? It, it's just difficult. Change is difficult. It's on anybody. And uh, especially when you are established winner and all of a sudden the game changed on you. It, it, there's a weeding out process. I think Golden State helped it out in the NBA a little bit. The people started realizing, might have to change a little bit. The game's changing. You know, computer says three-point shot. Well, computer says layup. Best shot in basketball. Computer says 1.5 points are scored from a free throw. 1.3 from a corner shot. 1.28 everywhere else. 0.78 to that post up that I ran down the floor for five or six years trying to get. And that's how smart I was. I was running, designing plays, fixing everything out to take the worst shot in basketball. That's a smart coach. And then I started realizing, okay, if they're saying these are the best shots, what type of offense do I have to have to put them in those positions? Because that's what good coaches do. They put players in positions that they can be effective. So we came up with uh, that. Then we left Phoenix <laughs> and we lost Steve Nash. And Steve Nash naturally played like that. So I had to teach that to Raymond Felton. And that's kind of what I did for Mike. I did the practices and I did the player development part. So I had to figure out some way how to teach a player how to play like Steve Nash. So I had to put some drills in and different ways to teach him. Jeremy Lin's story, boom. He walks in, we take him, put him through all kinds of things that showed him what, how we do things. And it's a, it's a little thing I do in our practices here that I'm gonna keep a secret till I retire. You know, although I've shown it a few places, but uh, it just helps kid understand how ball movement, spacing, taking shots when you need to. It just teaches them the ability to do that. And what you'll find is, and I know, I, and I won't mention his name, but he's a prominent name. They will look at you and they'll go, well, my players can't do that. Well, my players, I got to recruit guys that can shoot. And I, I always look at them and said, you know why they can't shoot? Because you don't think you can. And I, I go there. There's a point, believe me, that you got to teach. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of it is the confidence you instill in what you don't. Not, it's like, I, like you asked me about John. It's 
me not holding John back. A lot of coaches, and I probably won at one time. I'm not saying I was perfect, but a lot of coaches pigeonhole players. You know, when you've shot 50,000 jump hooks in the lane on the right hand and done nothing else for a player because he's a low post player, now you made him pretty one dimensional. Not hard to guard, you know, becomes easier. So I'm kind of that way. Sorry, Coach. We've got five minutes left. We're going to go here, <coughs> then here, then here. And that's all we'll have time for for questions. Yeah, uh, Rick McCann, Huntington, West Virginia, Herald Dispatch. Nice uh, to see you, Rick. You too, Coach. Uh, just curious how you think the accomplishments of this team stack up against maybe your NIT semifinal team or, or Mike's NCAA team and some of the others through the years. Well, you know, if you just look at quality, you know, my NIT team was when 16 and 16. So that would be 32. We would be just now playing 32 best teams, and we won two games. So Mike's team never did that. I always get him. He, he had the highest ranked team, and he had the best players because they had like five high school All-Americans on that team. We had five, I always say, we have five uh, playground All-Americans in Mullins. But uh, they have five all over the country, the best. And, uh, you know what? We won two games, beat Villanova first round, beat Stu Lance in Nebraska was ranked. We beat them 30 points. Got beat by Marquette, which was Al McGuire's years, in about three or four points. So we were a good ball club. Uh, I, you'd almost have to combine the NIT and the NCAA in my era to see what accomplishments you have in this era because there's 68 teams now. So, you know, there was only – 16 said 32 teams in those two tournaments at that time. So I don't know. You compare it. It's hard to look back. Uh, John Elmore's a lot better player than I ever was, you know. So what I was playing against, we didn't have trainers and food places and film. You know, we stopped filming. It burned. You had you couldn't do it on the real real. So it was hard to learn from film. So you know, they have a lot of advantages. So it's hard to go back. And Kyle Bonnegar, ESPN. Uh, playing catch up here, can you walk us through the process that actually led to your hiring at Marshall? My hiring? Yeah. Truthful. Say, I can't lie. That's, it's hard. I get in trouble because I can't either. Well, they want a mic, which is always, you know, I'm, I've always been second pick, you know. Sometimes on playgrounds, when I first showed up, nobody knew me. I was never got to play. So, because they look at this, you know, it's been the white men can't jump or something. I was that guy. You know, Mike came in, he's 6'3", long arms, he always got picked. And he had my success to live a little on where I played, and then they recognized he's pretty good. So, uh, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> How I was hired, yeah. So, they wanted Mike, didn't pick him. I was out there, but from what I hear, they were going to hire somebody else. And then my lawyer, Mark, my other brother calls and kind of lays out a little game plan for what we'll, how we'll react. And next thing I know, I was hired. I, but I'm one of those guys. Hey, I haven't written a resume, resume before. I had the job at Marshall, and that was the first resume I ever wrote. So I was playing golf when they hired me at Sox too. So I just kind of bounce around. And I'm a day-to-day -day guy. I can enjoy anything. If I wasn't coaching, I'd be – talking to Mitch over there, and we'd be t having fun doing something. So I enjoy it. Believe me, I'm blessed to have the job I got. Blessed I get to talk to Chuck every day after after games. I look forward to it. You know, Some people don't. I do. So. One minute left. Kevin Kinder, Blue and Gold News. Coach, given that West Virginia's goal with their pressure is to speed up the game and speed up players, does that play into your wheelhouse, given the pace that you like to play out? out of but other than that, what else is there? I mean, it's not, we're not going to war. No, we're going to do what we do. We're going to come down, that ball is going to fly around, and that day's over, we'll go shake our hands, and we win, we'll shake our heads and yell. And if we don't, I'll walk out and try to get better next year. I don't, we don't plan, I don't, you know, I did, I did, I guess the best example, and I'll, I'll quit on this, but, we did the beach ball classic for years. And my team would be down there warming up. And I'd look down on there. He's got Kobe, Vince Carter, Kevin Garnett. 
You know, by the time, if you look down that way, you get scared. Hell, you wouldn't even go play. So I quit looking. We just concentrated on who we were. And you know what? When I found, what I found out was took Vince Carter into overtime. We beat the number eight ranked team in the country. We started doing what we do and not worrying about the, what they do. So I'm not going to worry about what they got a great ball club. They should be proud of who they are. And I think we got a great ball club. I don't know who's going to win. We'll find out. And you know, regardless, I'm going to be proud of our team, and I'm sure Coach Huggins is going to be proud of his team. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Thank you all. Good luck. Now we need to get one. Okay, up next we'll have the West Virginia student athletes. Again, make sure to silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Raise your hand and we'll get you the microphone.
sorry about that. We, we ran out of time. Okay, for West Virginia, the student athletes are Javon Carter, Daxter Miles Jr., and Issa Ahmad. We'll let them get settled, and then we'll uh, take questions for them. All right, we'll take questions for the student athletes. Max Bonstetter, Sports Illustrated. Uh, defense is key for your team. How do you plan to stop the, the quick guards of Marshall, especially John Elmore? Um, we're going to key in on them, team defense, um, just like we did against uh, Murray State. Everybody's going to get a chance to guard them, and um, we're going to focus and just do our best on them. John, Chuck Land of Herald Dispatch. What uh, you've seen Elmore some? What's your what's your thoughts on him? Uh, he's a very good player. He can shoot the ball. He can score many different ways. Um, and he's a very good player. Any other questions for the student athletes? Uh, it's for all three of you. Mark Ziegler, San Diego Union Tribune. Uh, Marshall's a team that's pretty heavily into analytics and base a lot of what they do around it. How much do you guys use analytics? How much are you, I mean, are the coaches coming to you and, and giving you advanced statistics? Or are you guys pretty much an old school team that, that just grinds it out and, and plays your, your system? Very old school. Um, we just go out there, we play hard. Um, we just try to be the, the aggressive and um, Rebound it, play defense, try to turn them over, speed them up, and just do what we do. Uh, just like you said, um, just try to take every, just try to take things away from them, and um, you know, just make them uncomfortable. Brent Scrotenbor, USA Today. How do you guys feel about playing Marshall in particular, two thousand miles away from West Virginia? It don't matter. This, this is March. We're here to win a national championship. It just happened that we just matched up against Marshall. It, it don't matter who it is. We're going to come to play and do our best and try to get a win. It's another game. Would you guys like to play them during the regular season every year if it's up, up to you? That's not up to us. Any other questions for the student athletes? Okay,
tonight we are ready with West Virginia head coach Bob Huggins. There will be no opening statement from Coach Huggins, so we will begin with questions for him. Any questions for Coach Huggins? Mitch Vengo from Charleston Gazette. Now, Coach, I was just wondering, a lot has been made off the court about the series and everything, but I'm wondering, the game itself, how do you think that these two teams match up and where do you think the game will be decided? Well, they do a terrific job with spacing. Uh, I think Danny probably does as good a job of spacing as, as anybody we have in, in coaching. Um, you got to make shots, Mitch. I mean, it comes down to... At this time of year, you don't get as many open shots as probably you get during the regular season. So you got to make them count when you do get open shots. So hopefully we can we can make some shots. We won't start out one for 14 or whatever it was. Coach Bryce Miller from the San Diego Union Tribune. Um, I know in the heat of a post game and deadline and all those things after your game, there still is a lot of discussion today about the, the series and the history with the teams and the series ending. Just in your mind, is that, uh, is that all for us? Is, that a, is there any bearing on what happens on a basketball court with, with the kind of history you guys have? Yeah, I'm really glad that you guys enjoy it. Um, It, it really doesn't matter, does it? I mean, one of us going to win, one of us going to lose, one of us going to keep playing, the other one then going to keep playing. I, I don't. We're we're on one end of the state, they're on the other end of the state. We don't really cross, you know. So, um, it's from from our standpoint, it's not what you know. You you want to make it out to be Duke, North Carolina. It's not that. I mean, it's 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 not that at all. Mark Ziegler, San Diego Union Tribune also. Um, the question about analytics, they're, they're very much into analytics and, and, and openly say they base their, their offensive schemes uh, around them. What, what part do analytics play in, in your coaching? You've been at this you know, a long time. And, and what, is there any place for them in college basketball it, it, you know, in the future? Do you see them becoming a bigger part? I'm sure there are. I don't know what it is. Danny could answer that better than I. I I'm sure there is. Um, you know, it's a game of neuromuscular integration. That's what it is. It's muscle memory. It's doing the same thing over and over and over and over again until it becomes ingrained as in, in your neuromuscular system. So to me, it, it, it's repetition. Now, maybe analytics can tell you what kind of repetition to do. I don't know. Uh, I've been doing this 40 years. My dad was a coach. I can't ever remember not being in a gym. And, uh, I remember being in a gym when my dad was playing at Alderson Broadus College, so I've been in a gym a long time. I just don't. Um, you can make numbers, I think, sometimes say whatever you need them to say. And, and so I'm, I'm more in line with we're going to drill what we do. We're in. We're going to try to continue to do it over and over and over again until it becomes a habit. We're going to go first over here and then back down. Kyle Wanager at ESPN. It's been 20 years since the Jared West shot that kind of left a lasting impact for. You just won't let things die, will you? <laughs> I, I just wanted to ask, what kind of lasting impact has that shot left on the program at West Virginia? You obviously have a pretty unique. Well, they show it before every game, which I can't believe they would do, you know, but it's every game they show Jared banking that shot in and, and the Mountaineer running out on the floor, firing a gun and the cheerleaders following him and all that. It was supposed to have been a technical, but we passed on that, you know, that, um, I don't know. I mean, Ruben got a piece of it. If he wouldn't have got a piece of it, it probably wouldn't have banked in, but I mean, it's a great win for West Virginia. I just happened to be on the other side at that time. Tim Booth from the AP. Bob, I don't mean to bring up more old history, but um, but you will. I will. Uh, Purdue lost Isaac Haas to an injury after their first round game. You kind of had a similar situation with Kenyon um, back. I think it was '97. How do you balance 
having to account for losing a key player like that with also not getting away from having to guess make wholesale changes and still and still do what you do well well you have to understand we just didn't lose a player we lost the best player in the country the unanimous national player of the year and it, it there wasn't even anybody else talked about he was the unanimous national player of the year and he did it at both ends so oh, he was a it was a it was a big loss it was a big loss for us there's no way around it he's a great player i mean he went on and played what it was 15 16 years in the nba after after the broken leg and after the micro fracture surgeries and all those other kind of things he had he had incredible toughness and he brought incredible toughness to the uh, to, to every game so i mean i i don't i i know i know matt well we've scrimmaged and all that and 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 he's a really good player um i don't i don't think they depend on him as much as we depended on Kenyon. They've got a bunch of guys that make shots. They, they, you know, really outside of the one big, they play pretty small. And so, you know, I think ho hopefully for them, they can adjust and do a better job of it than what we did. Uh, front. Max Bonstetter, Sports Illustrated. I heard you talk about all your recruiting players that want to play and want to play for your, your program. How do you determine whether or not a recruit wants to play? Well, we watch them a lot. We watch them a lot, and you know, I I, I think it's uh, it, you go on the the AAU trail in in July, and the guys that decide they need a rest, we really don't need. You know, we need guys that are going to play hard. We need guys that play every day, that show up and play every day. Uh, I just I just did a CBS radio thing with Mike Montgomery, and he said, you know, I'm, I am amazed at how hard Javon Carter plays. Well, I saw Javon Carter play at 8 o'clock in the morning, sitting there drinking my coffee, and it was pressing then, running around like crazy, stealing the ball. That's the kind of guys we want. We want guys that want to play. Coach Bryce Miller again, San Diego Union Tribune. What what does meeting on the stage mean to your state in the in the tournament? Well, a lot of interest, obviously, but you have to understand our state. I mean, it, it doesn't matter who we'd be playing there. I mean, there's going to be almost everybody in West Virginia either watching it on TV, listening to it on the radio. I mean, that's that's our state. You know, they. We don't have we're, – we're, we're so different. We don't have professional teams. And we really only have two, uh, two major colleges. And, you know, people rally around uh, West Virginia. It's not just the people in the state. It's the people who unfortunately had to leave the state to get a job, you know, to do other things. So it'll be people in Texas. It'll be people in New Jersey. It'll be people in Georgia, a, a ton of people in Florida. And they're all going to tune in and watch it, but they do that all the time. I mean, that's that's what that's their, you know, whatever it is, San Diego Chargers or or no, they're not here anymore. Um, Padres, uh, scratch that Chargers thing. Uh, Padres, you know, that's that that's what we are. I mean, we we are we are the flagship for the state. Hey, Bob. Uh, Mike Casaza, 24-7 sports. Um, Marshall's on the way up with their offense and what they do being unique, and you turn things around with your defense being unique. Um, just relative to succeeding, I guess, what's the value just in being unlike other people? I think it helps. I mean, I think I think back when, when Syracuse was one of the few people playing 2-3 zone the way they played it. They didn't play it flat like had been played for years and years and years. They raised those wings. And what Jim did with that, I thought, was, was very unique. And it, it really bothered people. I thought it took their program to really a, a, another level. They were, they were good already, but I think they became great. They became one of the great teams in the country. And it was the uniqueness of, of what they did and how well he taught it. Any other questions for Coach Huggins? Okay, Coach. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.
have the students from Auburn. They're up there. Okay, very good. Yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Still missing quite a lot now. So okay. Auburn and we're not going to be able to practice. Gotcha. Can we help you with? See the two names right up there?
We do it fine. I did. I talked to uh, one of their chief ops guys, Tom Tom Granucci. He thinks we got a good shot. Um, I'm gonna touch base with him earlier in the day. Yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do. I'd love for us to get it in here before the first game. But we might even have to think about maybe between games. We'll we'll work. Okay. He's kind of got to get a feel for it. The, the key is how many of the NCAA big shots want to park there. They all want to park there, then it's the free. But if it's not, then we'll, we'll work it up.
We'll be ready to go with the Auburn student athletes in three minutes. Remember to silence cell phones, announce your name and affiliation when asking questions. Raise your hand and we'll get you a microphone. The Auburn student athletes are Horace Spencer and Jared Harper. And now we'll take questions for the student athletes. Uh, Philip Marshall, Auburn 247 Sports. Horace, could you just talk about first your performance last night, particularly defensively, and how you have kind of coped with, since Anthony's been out with a with a different kind of role? I feel like I took on a bigger role because Anthony being out had a uh, 
pick up some more minutes and had to find a way to stay out of foul trouble yesterday. Just playing smarter and just trying to dial it back a little bit. Let, let, let the game come to me and just, you know, see what happens from there. Mark Murphy from inside the Auburn Tigers. Jared and Horse, could you talk about what you've seen in Clemson so far from your scouting report? Oh, just from what we see so far, um, they're a good offensive team. They have a lot of good sets, and they like to just be able to get in the lane and force people to help. So we have to challenge ourselves to keep our men in front of us and be able to, for them to see bodies so they don't attack. Same question for you, Horace. I feel like they're big, got a uh, real dominant presence in the paint, and uh, I got to learn, I got to figure out a way to keep that presence as a restraint and keep the paint under control as the uh, dominant big on my team. When you guys were up at Charleston, at the Charleston Classic, did you watch them play when you guys were up there? Did you see them? So they were in the same tournament. No. Honestly, I don't remember. No, okay. no I, don't, I don't think we did. Okay, thanks. Max Bonstetter, um, uh, Sports Illustrated. Uh, you were a part of Auburn history last night with your first March Madness win in nearly 15 years. Uh, you did it with elite defense. How does Co Coach Pearl prepare you to play such great defense in such uh, such a big game? I'm just going into every game. We know <clears throat> if we defend and rebound, we can play with anybody. So um, going into the game, we knew if we could defend and rebound. And we weren't making our shots, so we, something had to happen. And that was our, our defense. I feel like defense is the main part that we can personally can control. You can't always control if your shot's falling or not, but defense mostly effort and energy, and that we had to bring the effort and energy in the first and second half of the game. Uh, Mark Ziegler, Sandy, and Union, Union Tribune. For Jared, I, I don't know if you saw the NCAA statement about the free throws yesterday, uh, <coughs> the, the late free throw. W what happened on that? Did did were you surprised you were put on the line, or did you know what was going on and just said, oh, I'm going to go to the line and not say anything? No, no, it was just they, the ref, after the, I guess the foul, the ref pointed at me to go to the line, so I just stepped up and went to the line. So that point. Did you know Did you know that you didn't get fouled? Um, I, don't, I don't really know. I just know the ref told me to go, so I, so I went. Yeah. So we, you weren't aware that you know, you're a better free throw shooter and, you know, you be better off with you in the line, maybe? Um, I know I'm a great free throw shooter, and I also know that Schumann's a great free throw shooter, but the ref, like I said, pointed at me, so I went to the line. Yeah. Ali Lieberman, SB Nation. Um, you guys are a pretty young team. Um, Jared, what have you learned from um, Mustafa Heron as a guard? Um, I know he's only a sophomore, but what are the biggest takeaways from his game? Um, just he's a hard worker. Um, that's, that's the number one thing. So. I know a lot of us spend time in the gym, so we all we all learn from that. We all learn from one another with being being in the gym. Um, he's also a great competitor, which I think comes with a lot of our teammates. Our, a lot of our teammates don't like to lose. We like to win, and just going along with that, we're just a family together. So yeah. And you guys are both really involved in the community. What have you learned from him off the court as a leader? Um, just that he he cares for other. He also cares for other people. He doesn't only care for himself. So um, that's a, that's another thing that I've learned from. Philip Marshall, 247 Sports. Horace, could you just talk about um, how hard it was for you to deal with it when Amperty went down and how he's handled it and how he's maybe helped you out some in the process? When he had hurt his foot, it was really emotional. I mean, a couple of us cried. And I just knew that game coming in the second half that I had to be even more of a presence and more of a leader just for the team so that even though he's gone, it still ain't no drop off. There's still no drop off in the paint. I'm gonna have to take on a more dominant role, like I said earlier. And just now, knowing that he's not, he, he hasn't came back. I just had to you know pick it up, play smart. Even though I'm not a more of an offensive presence like he was shooting threes, I still had to figure out a way to be an offensive threat. Now I can pass the ball more. I can pass the ball, get help my teammates get shots, and just you know just be more facilitator that way. Todd Leonard from the San Diego Union Tribune. For both you guys, um, Auburn's known as mostly a football school. What was it like kind of going to a school where you knew right off the bat that football was kind of up there on another level? Um, and did they kind of use football in recruiting at all with you guys? Did you guys go to football games? Did you visit with the football coaches? Kind of what's the culture like there with that? Um, 
Yeah, well, personally, I have, well, both of us have been to football games, but I just think coming to Auburn, a lot of uh, everybody on the team wanted to make history. That was a part of one of our goals for coming to Auburn to <clears throat> start, a, start a new tradition, a, a new winning program. So we've been able to do that for the um, last couple of years, and we're, we're getting better and better every year. With me being uh, the junior of the team, yeah, I came in when the uh, basketball team was at its lowest peak, you know. So it was a, a major football school, and and yeah, they football was a big part of me coming here. Cause I'm not big on football, but I like to watch it. You know what I'm saying? I like to see that our, our football team is great, and I wanted to use that as motivation for the basketball team to be also great as well. That it's not just a football school; it can be a basketball school as well. Like more like a challenge to the basketball team. Hold on, wait, wait for the microphone. Thank you. Did you go to football games as a recruit? Uh, no, I did not. I was really on the basketball court. Uh, Mark Sewer, San Diego Union Tribune. Um, when most people think Auburn, they think Charles Barkley, Auburn in basketball. Um, have you guys ever met him? And and how much of a factor is that when you go to Auburn to play basketball? Is it is it in your mind? And is he talked about? Yeah, we met Charles. Charles is a great guy. He's, he's a big factor. He comes to the locker room, talks to us sometimes, to give us little inspirational speeches. And just, you know, having Charles be one of alumni is, is probably one of a great attribute to have to uh, Auburn basketball. Oh, yeah, I agree. Um, he's been successful at every level for him to come back and just encourage us to um, see where, where he's been and where, where we're going. It's, it's always good. Any other questions for the student athletes? Okay, thank you. Good luck. Thank you.
reminder, silence your cell phones, announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions, limit of one follow-up and raise your hand and we'll bring a microphone to you and we'll begin with Auburn head coach Bruce Pearl with an opening statement. Well, we are, uh, <clears throat> we're glad to still be in it. Um, I don't know how many teams are left. I know as of last night there were 32 and I think there are probably, what, only 30 or so left, and uh, we're still we're still alive. Uh, it's sort of been the story of our season all year, all year long. Uh, these group, these kids have just kept finding a way. You know, uh, for us last night, turning College of Charleston over 21 times uh, when they averaged like nine. Um, Davion Mitchell, a freshman, having to come in there and play 19 minutes in the first half because Jared Harper's got two fouls, and. Uh, he really led the defensive charge for us. He disrupted the game with his ability to guard, and, and we all sort of picked up on that. And it's a good thing because offensively we were, we were crippled. Um, we didn't execute. We didn't shoot it very well. Um, we had some pretty good looks. We didn't take advantage of it, but I give College of Charleston credit. We're going to have to play a lot better uh, to be able to challenge Clemson tomorrow. We'll start on the left. Philip Marshall, 247 Sports. Bruce, the, the free, free throw shooting last night was 15 out of 32. Can you, is there any way to know why something like that happens? And is there anything you can do to make sure it doesn't become a, a <laughs> mental block going forward? I, I don't think it will. I think we'll be fine. Uh, what's the explanation? Um, sometimes if you're, if you're in a dome and the shooting background is different and the depth perception is a factor, um, sometimes in a dome, and I've been there, I've played some games in convention halls where they wheeled some baskets in, and the rims are tight. These rims aren't tight, these are co it's a college venue, and, and uh, they got nice rims, and so there really isn't any other reason other than either a lack of focus or just, just jitters, you know, just, just being, uh, being a little tight. And um, we've been a good, for th great free throw shooting team all year long, and I'm sure we'll, we'll do a better job tomorrow. JamesCrapiel.com. Bruce, six of the last eight games, you guys have shot less than 40%. That's not how your season was going. How, in the most simple of terms, how do you improve shooting from the field? You know, when, we, when, you, when you run as much ball screen spread as we do, the defense determines who's going to be open. And they're not going to have Bryce Brown open, and they're not going to have Mustafa Heron open, and they're probably going to guard our guards. So um, guys like Deshaun Murray or Chumo Kiki or Horace Spencer, those, those guys are getting open more in our, in our ball screen spread stuff. And so their ability to either make those shots or take advantage of the advantage, disadvantage created by the ball screen by putting it on the floor and then creating for somebody else has is, is got to be the key. We're not going to start being a more of a post-up team. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're still going to be able to score in transition out of spread, and uh, but we just got to make better decisions in advantage, disadvantage. I think the second thing would be this. Um, I think Bryce Brown is, 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 is a real key for us. In the second half of South Carolina, he made, I think, six or seven threes. In the second half last night against College of Charleston, he made three. And that was important for us. We got to get, I got I to gotta have Bryce try and be patient more patient early in the game, and then once he, once he makes one, then we're going to feed the monster and, 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 and let him go. I thought, he, I thought he forced things a little bit too much trying to get himself going, and as a result, his percentages haven't been as good. And as a follow to that, because it's been the last eight games, how much of the dip in field goal percentage is because Anthony's not there to clean up because he was taking high percentage shots, and as a second part to him, we spoke to him last night, he said that doctors had talked – take taken a month off of his recovery time. Can you just update it to where it stands for yeah. him recovery-wise? Now, you've, been, you've covered us all season long. And I have, I don't think there's, there's a, a time where we, in answer to a question at a press conference or even in our own private conversations where I've made an excuse. And, and so we, we miss Anthony because of the things that he does. As a stretch five man who can pick and pop and pick and roll, he was a, a dangerous weapon. Shot a good percentage from three, and he was our best finisher at the rim. Obviously, his rim protection 
for his size, he, he might have been the best shot, shot blocker in the country. Our emphasis has been, yeah, while we miss Anthony, we're seeing Chuma Kiki more. We're seeing more of Deshaun Murray, and we're seeing more of Horace Spencer, and that's a good thing. Um, and it's interesting because the answer to your first question was about our shooting percentages. Those guys are getting more looks, and we just got to be more, they got to just be more productive. But clearly, we, we miss Anthony uh, on, on both ends of the floor. And, uh, uh, but we're still good enough to win without him. In the front row, Coach. Uh, Max Bonstetter, Sports Illustrated. So the, the SEC has, in general, been known to be a football conference. Uh, what does it mean to you as a coach to lead your team this far into the tournament? And uh, I know you guys aren't done yet. Well, Max, I think the, uh, you know, for me, I take, I take great pride in the SEC. This is my 10th season. Um, and it's my seventh time in 10 years in the SEC, NCAA tournament representing the SEC. And I feel a responsibility because of the perception of what basketball's been like. But just like there's perception reality, I don't think that perception's always been accurate. Like one of the things that you know about SEC football is, is the defense, it's the speed, it's, it's, it's the physicality, it's, it's, the, it's the quickness, it's the explosiveness. That's what separates SEC football from everybody else is on the defensive side of the ball, guys that can fly around that are big, strong, and fast. Well, why can't we ever relate that to basketball? Wasn't South Carolina last year big, strong, and fast? Or Florida? Or Kentucky? Tennessee basketball right now, they're big, they're strong, and they're fast. And so we need to, rather than making excuses, we say, you know what? SEC basketball is a, like, a lot like SEC football. We were, we were big, strong, and fast last night in beating College of Charleston. Our athleticism, our speed, our toughness created 21 turnovers. And that was, that was a big factor for us. So I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with the fact that the league got eight teams in, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll continue to advance. Uh, Greg Austin, NorfAuburnTigers.com. You, you mentioned the jitters. Now that you've played a game and the players have that experience, know what to expect, do you think that will help you know, come Sunday? Well, I'm not, I'm not saying. I think the, the, the jitters was an explanation for maybe the free throw shooting. I don't think that had anything else to do with the outcome. Um, College of Charleston is a team that's good enough to beat a lot of teams in this tournament. They were good enough to beat us. Uh, their guard plays really good, and Brentley is a, a nightmare matchup for, for anybody. Um, and so it was a good win last night. Uh, when, 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 when Chile has two points, he averages 18 or 19, he's, and, and he's one of the best players in that league. So uh, I, I just think the explanation was the free throw shooting. Now, Clemson, I think Clemson, um, their three guards, are as good as any three guards in this tournament, period, period. Um, I think they've shown that all year long. Um, and then they've got, a, they've got a pro at center in Thomas. And so it's a very – they've got four dudes out there that can, that can really play. And the other guys are good, real good complementary players. So, um, I, I mean, Clemson's beaten Ohio State and Florida and North Carolina and Miami. They've, they've had some pretty big wins. So I, 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 what I told the team – the next five, we're going to win five more to win a national championship. Every one of the teams that we will play right now for the rest of the way are good enough to play in the, in the Final Four, every single one of them. So it's going, to take, it's going to take more than not being jittery tomorrow to beat Clemson. With that said, do you expect more shots to fall, though, for you guys? I, I do. I actually think we'll shoot better. I think we will shoot better in the perimeter. We have no choice. We've got to be able to knock, knock down shots. We've got to get some better looks. And believe it or not, to get better looks, I think we actually have to be more patient not to shoot the first one that's open. Uh, Aaron Torres with The Athletic back here. Kind of to follow up on that football question, Coach Brownell a few days ago talked about how he used the football program to help build up his program, bringing recruits to games, the, the excitement around campus. Have you had a similar experience both really at Tennessee but also here at Auburn? Absolutely. I mean, uh, we, we, football home weekends are our, our big recruiting weekend. Um, I, uh, there's nothing like SEC football. At home or on the road. I, I love to go to road SEC football games because there's 30,000 fans that travel on the road in every SEC venue. And it, it is, it, it's a great party. It's a great celebration. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, the support is, it's, it's, just, it's, it's incredible. And so when you bring a kid to camp, you bring somebody to Auburn for, for a home football weekend. I mean, um, the, 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 the pro pregame atmosphere, it's as good as anywhere 
in the country, none better, to be on the field for the Iron Bowl or, you know, the Georgia game or, you know, whatever it is. So absolutely. And, and Coach Melzahn, he's, he's, he's probably the best recruiter I have. I mean, he'll sit down and visit with prospects, and he'll tell those guys what separates Auburn. And then the same thing that separates Auburn in football, what separates them in basketball. If guys want to focus on their, their books and their basketball, their bodies and their Bible, Auburn's a great place to come. It's a real fit. And what I want guys, I want guys that, 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 that can fit. And if they want something that's going to be, you know, too fast and, you know, too big of city and they want to get lost someplace, this is not a great place to come because everybody in town is going to know who they are. But a lot of times that makes guys great. Important follow-up. Uh, what's your favorite SEC road venue outside Auburn not being a road venue, of course? I guess Tennessee would probably be uh, my favorite road. I mean, come on, what else do you expect me to say, right? Tennessee and Auburn have got the two best, two best venues in, in, the, in the SEC. Uh, Mark Ziegler, San Diego Union Tribune. Um, NCAA put out a statement today saying that Jared was not supposed to shoot that free throw last night. Were you aware of that? Um, I know sometimes coaches are aware and just kind of look the other way and, and uh, hope for the best. And what happened on that play? Yeah, I saw, I saw that on the bus coming in. I had, I had no idea until the statement came out that it was even, in, even an issue. Um, so I don't know any more about it from last night than what you do. What I understand was that um, Chuma got the rebound and immediately got it to Jared and the whistle blew. And upon awarding the free throw, they pointed to Jared as the shooter. I, I don't think Jared, I don't think they pointed to Chuma and Jared went to the line. I think they pointed to Jared. And, and so I think there may have been contact with Chuma. And when Jared first got it, there may have been contact with him. And so, because they were trying to foul. And so, but I didn't know anything about it until coming on the bus over to, to the game. First row and then second row. Uh, Philip Marshall, two, Auburn 247 Sports. Bruce, uh, Horace, to this untrained eye, seemed to play really strong last night. Uh, how valuable has, how much better has he gotten since since Anthony went down, and how crucial is it that he that he keep that up and stay well, in the game? I mean, I mean, it's crucial. I mean, like we did individual we did individual offense today, um, and um, you know, guards were down one end and the bigs were down the other. I had five guys down at one end, and I had three guys down the other, and one of them was 6'3". And uh, Horace and Schumer and Deshaun, that's our, that's our front line. And, um, and so for Horace, I, I just can't emphasize so much what a leader he is in our locker room. Um, he's, just, he's, he's an older soul. Uh, he has to be because he's a father. And Avery celebrated his first birthday yesterday. And... Um, and so what a, special, what a special birthday present for his, you know, for, for his son. Forced, forced Horace, I, Horace has been forced to grow up real fast because of some challenges at home. And, and, and he had a tough, tough upbringing. A lot of love, but a lot of challenges. And um, as a result, little things, little problems aren't that big a deal to Horace because he knows what real problems are all, real challenges are all about. And um, he's also very blessed to be here. He, he knows how far we've come. He remembers it when he first got there. And we were light years away from even remotely seeing postseason. And now to still be one of 32 teams, Horace feels honored and blessed and feels responsibility to try to take advantage of this opportunity. So he has stepped his game up. He stepped his focus up. He's got his hands full with, with Thomas tomorrow. But I have no doubt that physically, emotionally, spiritually, Horace Spencer will step up. Any other questions for Coach Pearl? Uh, Josh Vitale, Opelik, Auburn News. Bruce, I know you've seen this Clemson team before, not playing against them, but you saw them in Charleston. What do you think of the matchup, the way you, the teams match up going in this game? You know, I, I think uh, I think I think Brad Brunell does as good a job as there is. I mean, he's 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 an outstanding game planner. Um, you look, try to find a weakness in their offense and go, well, maybe we can play a little zone because they don't do this or. You know, they don't do a very good job with this, and they got great balance. So I think from a standpoint of strategically, I don't see a ton of weaknesses. Um, their guards play heavy minutes, but they have all season long, so foul trouble could be an issue. Um, uh, you know, I, I think that um, uh, we've got to be able to do what we – we've got to be able to make shots. we got Mustafa and Bryce and Jared and Shuma and Deshaun 
have got to be able to make – our shooters got to be able to make shots. Now, i got to do a better job of getting them good looks. But we got, in order for us offensively to be able to win, that's got to be – our spread has got to, be, got to rule the day for us. Jared has got to do a great job in ball screen, attacking the rim and getting our guys shots. We do that, we got a chance. Justin Ferguson, SEC Country. Bruce, you just talked about getting Chuma in, in those guys more more opportunities to shoot. Do you feel like you probably should have got him the ball a little bit more, try to get him involved a little bit more in the offense last night? He didn't didn't seem to get very many looks. Yes, yeah. I mean, I, I would. Uh, he needs. He definitely needs to be. He definitely needs more touches. He does. Uh, in the other game here. Uh, Marshall in West Virginia, you have a team in Marshall uh, and a coach who is heavily, heavily in analytics. He's, he's based his, his team, his system around that. Um, w w is there a place for analytics in college basketball? Um, how much do you use them? And, and where do you see as, you know, do you, do you see five, ten years down the road all teams being like that? Or is this just kind of a, a niche thing right now? Well, I mean, I think it's, it started in the NBA. And that's, that's sort of where it's all spread. Um, you know, I just, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit more simple, you know, uh, threes and frees. I mean, those are two, two, I mean, it's not a very, you know, <laughs> complex strategy. Um, we don't have a post game and yet we go to line a lot because we, we, we take the ball to the basket off the bounce and we're hard to guard and people, people put their hands on us because we spread the floor. Uh, our, we try to have the lane open. Like Thomas's, rather than analytics, my big deal tomorrow is how am I going to get Thomas out away from the rim? Because if that big dude stays in the rim, it doesn't matter what we do. He's going to block everything, get every rebound. You know, it's a factor. So I think analytics are important, but um, they, don't, they, don't, uh, they don't dominate my thinking. Any other questions for Coach Pearl? Okay, thank you. Good luck. Thanks.
We will get going with the Clemson student athletes in four minutes. We'll get going shortly. Silence your cell phones. Announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions, and we'll get to the microphone. The student athletes for Clemson are Gabe DeVoe and Dante Grantham.
questions for the student athletes? Uh, Kyle Bonnegar, ESPN. Um, the Auburn players were asked about this too, and there's a reputation that you know Auburn is a football school. Obviously, Clemson has had a lot of success recently as well. What is the relationship like between the two teams, and how does kind of the you know there's a how does their profile help kind of raise awareness of of the basketball team as well? Uh, between the football and basketball team, I'm friends with a lot of the guys. Uh, I don't feel there's anything between us. Like we're we're all friends. Uh, I, I agree with Gabe. I mean, we're all friends. We hang out sometimes. They come and play basketball in our practice facility with us sometimes. So we're all cool. We play Fortnite together. <laughs> Any other questions for the student athletes? Yeah, it, just looking at uh, Auburn, just assess kind of the type of game you guys are expecting tomorrow. Uh, I know they have good guards. They can score the ball. Uh, physical offensive rebounding team, so we have to limit their offensive rebounds, second chance points, and uh, do a good job on their, their three guards. Um, also, they're athletic. You know, they can run, jump, score. They're a high major team, so we just got to bring our A game. Uh, Bruce Feldman, Sports Illustrated. Uh, just curious, as as guys who are on social media and looking around and watching the tournament, what is your reaction? Is it a little bit surreal to be in the middle of this thing that it goes on? Or, I mean, did you guys watch? Um, you wouldn't have had a chance to see, I guess, the, the 116 upset, but to see the reaction of it um, and still be fans, like how do you kind of manage that as while you're playing in it? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, they were going crazy yesterday in our game because they kept showing the game uh, on the Jumbotron. So. That was pretty cool seeing that. Uh, I didn't expect that to happen at all. So I mean, I'm still a fan of the tournament. So just being being able to watch all these games and also be a part of it. So I mean, any any time we have downtime, I'm watching as many games as I can. How did you guys find out that that ha upset? I mean, did you glance up? Did it end when you guys were still playing, or how did you find out that that finally happened? Yeah, it ended when we were playing, and uh, just the crowd reaction. Anything else for the student athletes? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it.
know that like when I took it here I was a shooter. And then you seem like a four or a five. So I was confident. So like I can I can listen, I can shoot shot goal down to an amazing and you didn't utilize it. No problem. Anyway. Um no no no, there's a lot more, but that's just a short set right now. That's just gonna hold you over till later. Um what were we talking about before this conversation happened? So women's basketball, there's a really big gap in um, talent level. So like, for instance, like in the tournament, if it weren't for Kinsey, like there were 16 people going to get blown out. But like now, the men's side, like anything can happen at any point because the the talent level between 16 and one or Ashley, can I can you grab the assistant thing back there? It's like super small. So it's more, it's just more exciting. Like women's more competitive. Like women's basketball is just a joke. They're like a female trying to coach girls. very well but like can get you in the pinch post because I'm a big body like that's that's what happens I'm just saying our game no our game is our games are very similar we wouldn't say that because you just didn't play you can only play in the system you see what I'm saying so like growing up like my dad when he was a boy so like I worked out every day at 5 a.m. my dad so like jab series like all that like I have all that in the arsenal but like I wasn't allowed to use it here so if I'm playing Four, which I'm not a four, four or five. I was starting center last year. Perfect. I'm not. I can't lie about this. No, no, no. So, so, yeah, exactly. So like, like I can't be my best version at home if I'm playing center here. And I'm gonna coach the entire time. I'm gonna dribble drive because I'm never getting outside the box. So it makes no sense. If you have somebody who can beat you from off the bounce, why would you put them on the post? Starter. First of all, she's first of all, I'm a starter. Okay, I used to, I was averaging 30 minutes a game, and then she went to the state. Now she wants to play games. And now I'm playing center. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my thing. It's like if you're not given an opportunity, if you're not put in positions to be successful, and there are people who are gonna play behind you, then you can't reach your maximum. All these people up here, all these coaches and players, they don't tell their D, but they don't do this or do that. Like, you know, you, you play. Like, you work and you play. You do well, you play. That's not how it is on the women's side. That's not how it is on the side. No, on the girl side, like, let me play right now and do what you're saying and get the shot. And then it's like so, like, laid out and strategic. It's just like, that's not basketball. It's supposed to be like free flowing. Recognize 
that they're trailing a stream, so I'm gonna tell my players to flare it. My friends, if you play Boise at home, we are up by 20 points. They came back and beat us by 20. I'm gonna tell you why that we lost. At halftime, they made adjustments, we didn't make adjustments. They came out, their rest of the game, like, probably no points, right? Yeah, it's like no points. She comes out, had a tw ends the game with 28 points, she goes to the second half, she's like, double spazzing, she's like,
All right, just a reminder, silence your cell phones, flash photography is prohibited, announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions, and we're going to limit to one follow-up, raise your hand, we'll get the microphone to you, and we'll begin with head coach Brad Brownell from Clemson with an opening statement. Yeah, just excited to be here um, for game two. Uh, really proud of the way our guys played yesterday. I thought we executed our game plan exceptionally well and uh, showed very good poise down the stretch and late in the game when they made a run. So uh, excited about that. I know we have our hands full with an Auburn team that is extremely talented. A lot of similarities, especially with guard play. They have terrific guards. And they rebound the fire out of the ball. They just absolutely attack the glass with three and sometimes four guys. So I think we've got to do a good job in that area as well. Uh, Will Vandervoort with the Clemson Insider. Uh, Brad, you know, today you went ahead and had practice early. What's your thought process in that? Is it just to maybe let the guys have the afternoon off and that's why you do it that way? Yeah, we just we like to get off our feet. Uh, as often as we can, we, uh, we like to be done 24 hours um, ahead of practice or ahead of the game time. So obviously we play tomorrow at four and we just want to be done with everything um, as soon as we could. We met this morning and, and got a few things in and then you know, went for about an hour uh, this afternoon and now we'll have a night meeting and you know, get up and get ready to go. Uh, Max Bonstetter, Sports Illustrated. It's been 19 years since Clemson has won a first-round game in March Madness. Yeah. So uh, some of You're your not even 19 years old. I was going to say, yeah, some of your players and me weren't even born yet. Uh, how do you think that uh, some of your guards uh, match up with the Auburn guards in this matchup? You know, I think it's going to be uh, a big part of the game. I really do. I think uh, those three guys for them really control it and we're the same way. Um, so I think a big part of the, you know, which team wins will be which set of guards plays better. I think they both, you know, all three guys can shoot it, uh, drive it to the paint, make plays, and I think it'll be exciting to watch uh, this game because of the quality of play out on the perimeter. Todd Summers, WSPA TV. Coach, I was just in there talking to your three guards, and they said they all have known each other since high school. Some of them played against each other. And so their sophomore and junior years in Shelton and Gabe, and then Marquise played with Gabe uh, in an AAU event all-star game in his senior year. How does a friendship amongst guys carry over onto the court when they start playing games in the heat of the battle and things really start to matter? Yeah, I think as much as anything, uh, it's just, you know, when you really like the guys you're playing with, you're willing to sacrifice more. And that's something we talk a lot about at Clemson is, being unselfish in nature uh, and having a willingness to want to sacrifice, you know, for the good of the team. And uh, our guys certainly like each other, have, have, a, uh, have a great relationship with one another. And I think when you watch us play, you see that. You know, one night it's Gabe, one night it's Shelton and Marquise. You know, when we're lucky, it's all three. Um, but I think, you know, some of that stems from the fact that these guys really enjoy each other as people and, and uh, as friends and spend time together, not only on the court, but away from the court as well. Uh, Aaron Torres with The Athletic. Coach, the other day you talked about the symbiotic relationship between the basketball program and the football program at Clemson. I was just in the locker room, and rumor has it that Dabo Sweeney shows up to your facility pretty regularly to play uh, pickup basketball. I would just ask, uh, what kind of player is he? And also, is it true that he brings his own uniforms with him? That was what was the rumor back there. Coach Swinney does love to play noontime basketball. Um, he's not there all the time. Let's let's make sure he is working most of the time. But he does show up uh, a little more frequently in the off season. Uh, he's a chucker. He's going to get a lot of shots up. There's no question about that. And there's really not anybody in the gym unless I'm there that is going to uh, tell him that he's shot too much. Most of the guys that are playing are his GAs, assistants, or other people in the athletic department that are scared of him. Um, but uh, he, he, he I, I joke, but he does love basketball. He was a high school player, and he was a good player in high school. And uh, there are jerseys, but he buys the jerseys. And if you, you know, if you reach a certain level, you're deemed to get a jersey. You have to, like, earn your jersey, according to him. 
and it says NTBA, Noontime Basketball Association, and he's obviously the chairman. Very good. Uh, as a follow-up to that, I was going to ask a question, but I can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> no, he Did doesn't you, defend and rebound very well. Oh, I was going to say, when you got here, you said that he was more enthused maybe than anyone uh, on your team. Has he reached out to you at all since last night? Anything, text message, anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've gotten some texts, and um, yeah, he's, like I said, he's a big basketball fan. Uh, he and I are, are pretty good friends, our families, um, so I greatly appreciate uh, his friendship, and he certainly has reached out. His wife's re reached out to me and Paula. Um, they're terrific, and, uh, you know, he's, he's, been, he's been a true friend for me through this time, and, and I just, you know, we have a good time together. We just, you know, it's a great way to, to have somebody to be able to just relax with every once in a while and, and kick back, but also to go to him, you know, for different professional advice when you've got things going on. And we talk, talk about different things together that way. So, um, yeah, it's been great. He's obviously reached out to us, and he'll be watching. Todd Summers, WSPA TV, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Coach, just the last 24 hours, what has it been like for you to hear the people telling you, you know, what this team has accomplished, balancing out that it's been so long since you've gotten to this point, with balancing it out with, we've still got work to do, we're not done. I mean, appreciating what you've done, but also looking yeah. forward. Yeah, you know, it hasn't been, I think, as crazy as everybody thinks it is. It's, you know, we uh, we had a great night last night. It was great for our program. We have a lot of boosters that came out with us that have been a big part of what we've uh, been able to build at Clemson these last eight years. We've had some folks that have given us, you know, been extremely generous, not only with their money, but with their time and have become friends. They're not just boosters to me because they're people that have have really done more for our program in terms of spending time with us and, and following us and traveling with us and, and going on foreign tours with us and just really getting behind our program and you know, have made the difference to help us uh, renovate our Coliseum and create uh, an unbelievable environment for our players. Um, those people have become, you know, friends of mine. And to share last night with them, although very briefly for me, uh, was special and a lot of fun. And obviously my family was here, my parents and wife and kids and, and my sister and her, her family. So to share that time with them was really special. Um, it was about an hour. Uh, and then it was right to Auburn. But, uh, you know, beyond that, it's just been business as usual. You're watching film till 2 in the morning. You're up at 6 in the morning watching more film and trying to prepare your team to play as well as they can play uh, tomorrow at 4. Uh, Will Vandervoort, Clemson Insider. Uh, Brad, you know, as far as the ACC goes, you guys play a rough schedule where sometimes a couple times a year you have to go less than 48 hours yep. to play a game. How does that help you? And I remember earlier also this season you said that you had to cut back a little bit in practice because you noticed your team was getting a little tired and fatigued. And what are some of those changes you made in practice to help them? Yeah, we just shortened practice a little bit and went a little less contact, um, a little more non-contact practice uh, at certain times in the year. And, you know, especially with the amount of minutes that some of our guards were playing and just worried about those guys being able to hold up. And, and I think we did a good job with that. You know, that was one thing with Dante's injury that I was, you know, I think is, you know, it's we're not as deep uh, as we were at the beginning of the season. Um, I think now we're doing fine. I think guys are excited. I think we're ready to play. I do think having had a couple of these two-day turnarounds in the ACC regular season, and then obviously we played in a in a MTE in the, way back a long time ago now, back in November. Uh, so we're used to these kind of preps. Uh, but it is a little different. Auburn plays a little different than most ACC schools. I don't know that they run an offense that's the same of anybody in our league. And so that part, it's a little bit unique. Todd Leonard from the San Diego Union Tribune. Uh, with football at its height just a couple of years ago. Um, we're still at a pretty high level now. You know, we what do we, what do we make final four, <laughs> and we got like one top ten recruiting class, and we're right. not going anywhere now. Right, we're not going anywhere. Go ahead. With, with we're all not that, quite a basketball school yet. <laughs> <laughs> would you? Can you ever imagine that you would be a basketball school relative to football? There. No, we're not. That's not what I was going to ask you, but 
I, that would get me in trouble with a lot of people uh, <laughs> to answer that question that way. No, but I do think uh, what I am optimistic about is that we can certainly coexist in a, in a very positive way. And the success of the football program over the course of the last five, six, seven years with Coach Sweeney has been unbelievable for not just men's basketball, but for our athletic department, our university, and our community. So, so what have you felt, Brad, in, in kind of in the fan base, that hardcore Clemson fan base, about raising expectations for your program given where football has been? Is there yeah. a palatable sense of that? Yeah, uh, no question. I mean, our folks want to win in everything we do, you know, whatever sport we play uh, at Clemson. And we're now at a position, I think, facility-wise and support to give ourselves a better chance. I don't think in the past we've always done that. I don't think we've always, you know, we may have given some lip service to it, but I don't know that we actually showed as a university that we really care a lot about basketball in certain situations. And we've worked hard, especially these last seven or eight years, to change that perception and to go out and friend raise and fundraise and finance and figure out a way to, to build a new facility and show that we care. And, and uh, obviously that starts you know, with making the players in your program feel good about being a Clemson basketball player, and then it helps in recruiting and everything that goes with it. And then as you start to win, you build a bigger, stronger fan base. You know, we sold out seven or eight of our games this year at home. I mean, we have, we have great attendance. We have passionate fans. They want to win. We're in an unbelievable league. We just haven't had long periods of success. We usually have a couple good years and then kind of go away quietly for a few years and then try to come back. And obviously that's something we're trying to change right now. Shannon Somerville, Fox Carolina Sports. Coach, I was asking some of the players in the locker room about this term, Clemson grit. And they told me you're the one that came up with it and you gave them a speech, I think, after family day. What is Clemson grit? What does it mean to you? And how does it apply yeah. to this season? Well. Grit, passion, and perseverance towards a long-term goal. Um, and that can be applied to many things. And I think that's something I wanted to challenge our players with because I don't think young people really long-term isn't how they think. Um, and it's not just a season. It might be a college career. It might be a professional career. It might be graduating from college. It's, it, it can pertain to just about anything. Um, but you need to have tremendous passion for something in your life if you want to be successful. And there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be difficult times. If you're going to be successful, you need to be able to persevere through that and have this undying belief in yourself and, and this passion and what you want to achieve um, that you're willing to work for it. And you're willing to go through these ups and downs and these challenges. And so to me, that's what, that's what grit is, staying power. And, uh, you know, it's something that we've talked about here the last couple years. We thought we needed maybe one of my assistants came to me and said, we really need to kind of brand our program a little bit, you know. Um, and so that was something that I came up with, and I think it's been, been good for our guys. Coach, over here to your left, Joe Gorcho, WIS in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm just curious from your vantage point, watching Elijah Thomas grow both on the floor and off of it, you know he has the one-year-old son. I got to imagine when you first heard the news he was going to have a child, you're wondering how can a young man handle this? How have you seen him kind of handle that joy of being a father along with committing to basketball and his academics? Yeah, um, he's really maturing. Uh, both on and off the court. And I think having a son has helped in that regard for him uh, because I think it's, it's put more responsibility in his life and it's, it's made him grow up a little bit and think <clears throat> beyond himself, um, which again is challenging for young people. Um, so I think it's been a good thing for him. Uh, you know, he certainly is motivated to be a good basketball player, but he's also motivated to be a good father. And he wants to do right by his son. He lights up, you know, once every two weeks, he's gonna bring me a photo of his son doing something uh, different. 
and he's upset with me that I haven't offered him a scholarship yet. He keeps saying that to me. Um, so I said, I'm not sure I would have offered you one knowing all that I know right now. But uh, anyway, he, he's, I'm proud of Eli. I really am. He's been, uh, his growth this year has been a real, in my opinion, one of the big difference makers for our team. He, defensively, he's been a difference maker. And I thought at the beginning of the game yesterday, his defense and rebounding really helped us get off to a great start. Uh, Grace Rayner, the Post and Courier. Obviously, we know a lot about David Scarra on the court with his defensive ability, but what is his personality like off the court? Yeah. <clears throat> he's hard to get to know like that. He, he's, he's pretty quiet. Um, just kind of goes about his business. Really just, uh, but an easygoing guy. Gets along with everybody. He rooms with Eli. So uh, those two guys have some fun and poke fun at each other uh, but you know what he's a very selfless guy and that's one of the reasons why he's a good defensive player and it's one of the reasons why I really like him as a player is he really just wants to win and I think that comes from who you are as a person and he's very humble and uh, he's really a he's a better player than he realizes and once he realizes he's really good he's going to jump to another level uh, he just, he probably is in his own way sometimes with that. Uh, but he's athletic, he moves, he's tough, he's competitive, and, uh, you know, it's really been fun to coach him. Anything else for Coach Brownell in here? Will Vandervoort, Clemson Insider. Uh, Coach uh, Amir Sims, he came in as a freshman, and he's been able to contribute right away the, and, and fill in for Dante. What is it about him that usually a freshman struggles to learn your defensive schemes yeah. and what you want to do? Why is he different from other freshmen you've had? You know, he's mature not only physically, which for big guys is, is a real challenge, I think, physically to be able to handle the physicality and the speed of the game, especially in the ACC as a freshman. Um, but all you got to do is look at him and see that that's not a big challenge for him. But he's also a very mature young man, went to boarding school, uh, for a couple years and really I think you know grew up quickly up there he's bright he's uh, he picks things up quickly he's a leader he has uh, an unbelievable outgoing personality that just attracts people and because of that he's he's a confidence giver he's an energy giver uh, he's just he's really special that way and uh, all of that in terms of his personality has allowed him to be mature enough to handle whatever we throw at him. And, uh, you know, obviously we're blessed that he's with us. Anything else for Coach? Okay, thank you. Thank you.